Hello everyone, I am Shikaina Aquino Maranga from the SN1 11A and today I am going to perform obtaining of vital signs. Accurate measurement of vital signs is critical because it reflects the body's basic functioning. It serves as a baseline data which allows us to track changes in patient's condition, recognize early patient deterioration, and prevent harm or errors that may occur. Vital signs include temperature, pulse rate, respiration rate, and blood pressure. Paraphernalia needed are digital auxiliary thermometer for patient's um, body temperature, stethoscope, and sphygmomanometer for, to measure patient's blood pressure, and a watch with a sweep second hand to measure patient's pulse rate and respiration rate and of course alcohol for disinfection and to avoid contamination so now i'm going to start by taking my patient's body temperature the temperature is very important because it reflects the balance between the heat produced and heat loss of the body and there are a few sites in which we could obtain its measurements from it could be through um, oral, temporal, rectal, axillary, or through the tympanic membrane. But for today, I am going to take my patient's body temperature through her oral and axillary sites. So prior to the conduct of the procedure, I am going to close the door to ensure my patient's privacy. I am going to adjust the light and adjust the room temperature for patient's comfort and of course perform hand hygiene to disinfect and avoid contamination okay so now i am going to introduce myself to my patient um, verify her identity and of course explain to her the procedure that i'm about to do Good morning, ma'am. I'm Shikaina Aquino Maranga, your student nurse for today. And may I see your wristband, ma'am? Please state your complete name. Sure, Aquino. Okay, and your birth date, please? February 6, 1970. Okay, thank you very much, ma'am. So today, I am going to um, take your uh, body temperature. Okay, I'm going to have to uh, put um, a digital thermometer in your mouth so I'll be able to have your body temperature. Is it okay with you? So to take for my patient's body temperature, I am going to use a digital thermometer and disinfect it first. Okay. And I'm going to have to place it on the um, posterior sublingual pockets of my patient's mouth. Okay, ma'am. Please um, open your mouth and touch the roof of your mouth okay close now okay so now we'll just have to wait until um, the temperature uh, or the thermometer beeps okay so now we'll just have to wait until the um, thermometer beeps which indicates that it has already obtained my patient's body temperature of course after that I'm gonna have to uh, inform the patient of the results of her temperature and disinfect the thermometer and of course document the data that I have gathered. Okay ma'am, please take it out. So ma'am, your um, body temperature is 37.5 degrees Celsius, which is within the normal range. Okay? So now I'll have to disinfect the thermometer that I have used. place it back so after the procedure I am going to uh, perform another hand hygiene and document the data that I have gathered and plot it on the patient's TPR sheet okay so now 
I'm going to uh, take for my patient's body temperature through her axillary side. But prior to the um, conduct of the procedure, I still for, need to um, do the uh, first uh, pre-introductory steps, which are to ensure my patient's privacy, um, provide comfort, um, do the hand hygiene, and of course, in introduce myself to my patient and explain what procedure I'm about to do. So, good morning, ma'am. I'm Trikaina Maranga, and today I'll be um, taking your body temperature through your axillary site or through under your armpits, okay? So, okay. may I see your hand, ma'am, and please state your complete name. I'm sure you know. And your birthday, please. Very six. Okay, thank you very much. So, ma'am, I'm gonna have to um, pull up your sleeves so I can put your, I can put the thermometer, okay? So, I'm gonna be using another um, digital thermometer for my patient's body temperature through her axillary site. And before I'm going to um, place it on the area, I'm gonna have, I'm gonna need to first take a look at it and see if there are any scars or lesions and pat dry if the area is wet or moist. Okay. So, ma'am, can you please raise your hand for me? Okay. So now we're just gonna have to wait for a minute or up until the um, thermometer beeps which indicates that it has already obtained the body temperature of the patient. So ma'am, we just have to wait for uh, the thermometer to beep, okay? Alright, so after um, this happens, um, I'm gonna need to inform the patient of the result of her temperature and of course disinfect the thermometer and perform hand hygiene and document the data that I have gathered. Okay, ma'am, lift your arms from me. Thank you. So, ma'am, your um, temperature is at um, 36.5 degrees Celsius, which is within the normal um, range, okay? So, I'm gonna have to uh, disinfect the thermometer that I have just used. Okay, Place it back, and then perform hand hygiene. It is important that we know that the um, axillary temperature is one degree um, lower than the oral temperature. And of course, after that, I'm going to have to um, document the data that I have gathered in the patient's TPR sheet. Okay, now I'm going to proceed to taking my patient's pulse rate. The pulse is a wave of blood created by the contraction of the left ventricles of the heart. And in order for me to measure it, I'm going to need to um, do palpation on the pulse sites of the patients, which could be through her temporal, carotid, apical, brachial, radial, femoral, um, popliteal, tibial, and her dorsalis um, pedis. But today, I am going to be palpating for her radial pulse because it is the easiest and the most accessible pulse site. So prior to the conduct of the procedure, I'm going to need to do the first four pre-introductory -intro uh, steps, which are to close the door, to secure patient's privacy. I'm going to need to provide an adequate lighting and adjust room temperature for patient's comfort, and of course, perform hand hygiene.
So, good morning, ma'am. I'm Shikaina Akina Baranga, your student nurse. And today, I'm going to need to um, measure your pulse rate. Is that okay with you? Yeah, Let me see your hand, ma'am. Please state your complete name. Carrie Akina. And your birthday, please. Okay, thank you very much. So, ma'am, I'm going to assess for your um, pulse rate. Can you give me your hand? Okay, so now... Um, to locate the radial artery or for the radial pulse, I'm going to need to use this two fingers of my hands and I won't be using my thumb because the thumb actually has a pulse in it and so I'll just have to trace her thumb and place my fingers in this area of her wrist and feel for the pulse. And it is important to know that um, aside from the number of beats per minute, to count, I also need to check for the strength of her pulse, which is um, graded on a 0 to 3 plus scale. 0 being the pulse um, is absent, 1 plus if it is weak, 2 plus for normal, and 3 plus if it is bounding. And of course, I'm also, I also need to check for its rhythm if it is regular or irregular. Okay, ma'am. So... Now that I have um, found her um, radial pulse, I'm going to start counting um, the bits per minute. Okay, so now I have obtained my patient's uh, pulse rate. Ma'am, your pulse rate is uh, at 75 beats per minute. It is graded 2 plus, which means it is normal, and it has a regular rhythm. Okay? Okay, so after doing the procedure, or after taking my patient's pulse rate, I can just simply proceed to taking her respiration rate too, um, without removing my fingers on her radial artery, and simply... Just look at the rise and fall of her chest so as not to make the patient um, conscious and uneasy, which can actually alter her breathing. Okay, and um, of course, this gives a much more accurate result for her respiration rate. Okay, so after doing the procedure, I'm going to have to uh, do a hand hygiene and of course document the data that I have gathered in her TPR sheet. So now I'm going to be uh, measuring my patient's um, respiration rate. So the respiration rate is simply the number of breathing a person takes in a minute. And it is usually done um, when the person is at rest. And by just simply counting the number of um, rising of the chest of the patient. So prior to the conduct of the procedure, I am going to do the four pre-introductory um, pre steps, which is to uh, ensure patient security and privacy and provide comfort and um, perform hand hygiene. I of course, introduce myself to the patient, verify her identity, and um, tell her what the procedure will be all about. Good morning, ma'am. I'm Shikai Namaranga, your student nurse, and may I see your wristband? Please state your complete name. Okay, and birthday, please. Okay, thank you, ma'am. So today, I'm gonna be 
um, counting your um, respiration rate, okay? okay? I just need you to be um, at ease and be relaxed. Okay, so for counting the respiration rate, I'm not only uh, simply counting for the number of breaths she takes, but also for the depth of her breathing, if it is labored or unlabored, and for the rhythm, if it is regular or irregular, and for the character, of course. And it is important to know that um, one rise and one fall of the chest would be equivalent to one respiration rate. Okay, so now, you place your hand here. Okay, and just relax, okay? Okay, so ma'am, your respiration rate is at um, 16 breaths per minute, which is um, within the normal range. And it is it has a regular rhythm and unlabored. Okay. So after doing the procedure, I then need to uh, do the hand hygiene and of course um, document the pulse rate, uh, the respiratory rate um, in her TPR sheet. So now I'm going to be uh, measuring for her fourth vital sign, which is the blood pressure. So the blood pressure is the pressure of the circulating blood against the walls of the arteries. And it could be obtained with the use of a um, stethoscope and um, a sphygmomanometer. Okay. Uh, prior to the procedure, I have to do the um, pre-introductory steps, which are to ensure my patient's um, privacy, to provide comfort, um, do the hand hygiene, and introduce myself to my patient, and uh, tell her what the procedure will be all about. So, good morning, ma'am. I'm Shikaina Maranga, and I'll be taking your blood pressure today. Okay, may I see your hand? Please take your complete name. And your birthday, please. Okay, so prior the... Uh, conduct of the procedure, I have already um, checked for my equipment if they are clean and that they are well functioning. I also have the correct size of the cuff that I'm going to need for my patient's arm and of course inspected my patient if she has any um, injuries, cast, bandages, uh, intravenous infusions, um, uh, blood transfusions, or any arterial venous um, fistula which could um, hinder me from taking um, her blood pressure in a particular limb. Okay, ma'am, can you move on here? Okay. So since the patient is sitting, I'm going to need to make sure that both of her feet are on the ground because um, the blood pressure increases if um, the legs are crossed, okay, and I'm going to have to place her arm at a um, heart level because if the arm is at a lower level, then it would um, give us a higher um, blood pressure reading. And if the arm is at a higher level than the heart, then it would give us a low blood pressure reading. Okay, so since this is the initial um, examination of my patient, I'm gonna have to 
uh, do a preliminary palpatory determination of her systolic pressure to avoid um, having a lower systolic um, reading by auscultory method um, if there is an auscultory gap. And to do that, I'm first going to need to um, place the cuff around her arm. Just about um, one to two centimeters above the antecubital space. Okay. And palpate for her um, brachial artery through the use of my two fingers. Once I have found the um, brachial artery, I'm going to start inflating the cuff and until I no longer feel the pulse of her brachial artery. So I'm going to deplate the cuff. And I have already taken her um, estimated systolic pressure, which is at 110 millimeters of mercury. So for the actual um, taking of her blood pressure, I'm going to need to inflate the cuff at about um, 30 millimeters of mercury um, higher than the estimated systolic pressure. This is to ensure or to avoid... Uh, missing the auscultory gap which is the um, which is the temporary disappearance of the carotid cuff sound while uh, deflating the cuff okay so for the actual procedure I'm now gonna need to use my stethoscope but first I'm gonna need to um, disinfect the ear pieces and the diaphragm and the bell of my stethoscope. Okay, for this time, I'm gonna have to use the bell part of my stethoscope because the bell is best used for hearing low pitch sound. So once I have found the um, brachial artery, I'm going to need to inflate the cuff up until 140 millimeter of mercury. Okay, so now I'm going to um, fully deflate the cuff and the first sound that I have heard would be her systolic pressure and for the diastolic number, it would be the period of silence after the last sound that I have heard. Since this is my patient's initial um, examination, I'm going to need to do the procedure again on her other arm.
from now, I have your, you got your um, blood pressure and it is 115 over 75 um, millimeters per, of mercury. Okay, it is within the normal range. Thank you very much for your cooperation, ma'am. And so I already have her um, blood pressure and after doing the that procedure, I'm going to need to uh, fully deflate the cuff and wipe the cuff with disinfectant so as to reduce the risk of um, cross-contamination. And of course, I'm going to need to do um, a hand hygiene and plot the data that I have gathered in my patient's um, TPR sheets. And that would be all for my return demonstration of um, obtaining vital signs. Thank you very much.